Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you glory, God. You're worthy, King Jesus, from the rising of the sun to the going down the same. Your name is worthy to be praised, O God. Father, we worship you. We give you glory, God, for there's no God like you in all the earth. Father, have your way in us tonight, O God. Minister to our hearts. Speak by the Holy Spirit. Changes from the inside out to make us better stewards of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Draw us near to you, Father God, that we would draw nigh to you, Father, with surrendered hearts. Giving you the glory, the honor, and the praise, O oh God. We ask, Father, you cleanse us, sanctify us, fill the Holy Spirit, purify us, O oh God. Make us better. Remove the busyness from the day from our hearts, O oh God. Every distraction, every hindering spirit. Every stronghold, every bad habit, break it now, God, in the name of Jesus. Give us the willpower and desire to follow you and serve you, Lord God, wholeheartedly. Not half-hearted, not stagnant, Father God, but surrender Lord, to your Lordship, your authority, that we will walk by faith and not by sight in the promise of your word. Be glorified, be lifted up, O oh God. King Jesus, you reign mm -hmm. forever and ever, Lord God. Have your way, God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord God. Have your way tonight, O oh God. Saturate your anointing, God. Power us by your grace. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. God bless you, my sister. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Good to see you. That's okay. That's all right. Praise God. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, we're going to have a good time tonight, you know. Amen. I believe in God for a good time. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Go get my stuff set up here. Okay. All right. Praise God. You're the first person that came on Google Meet in quite a while. Really? <laughs> yes. Well, I got your, uh, your text thing. Okay. I can watch myself. I don't want to miss it. Yes, yes, yes. You have the option to either listen through here or just on Facebook Live, like last time when you came on there. Come on, both oh. of them right now. I'm doing both. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so, so you know, I, I try to do this each week. Try to set it up where, you know, we have people come on who wants mm -hmm. to just listen in or they can come on live, you know, Google mm -hmm. Meet. So if they have any questions, they can ask questions, but people wouldn't come on. You know, every now and then one of my friends come on, Dion, you know, so I just pray God continue to bless her, you know, too, whatever she's going through, give her the strength. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're going to get started in a little bit, just waiting, a, you know, six o'clock hour, most people come on, a little bit after six, but I used to start at exactly six o'clock, whether it's nobody on or not, I still start. So, you know, so tonight I'm going to start with a little worship song. I was just in a word of prayer before you came on. You know, so I'm going to um, do a little worship song and then go into our, our lesson tonight, which we're talking about, last week we talked about um, how God reveals his attributes. God reveals his attributes. And then tonight we're going to talk about um, uh, part three, which is Christ's commendations. Christ's commendations to the church of Thyatira. Amen. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here, you are welcome here, in this place, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here, you're welcome here into this place, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. 
you are welcome here into this place yeah. come and change us come and fill us come and dwell with us holy spirit come and move through us come and speak to us come and revive us holy spirit you are welcome here you are welcome here into this place holy spirit holy spirit you are welcome here you are welcome here into this place holy spirit holy spirit you are welcome here you are welcome here into this place come and change us come and feel us come and heal us deliver us holy spirit we need you to speak to us come and live in us come revive us do well with us holy spirit you are welcome here you are welcome here into this place amen 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 hallelujah glory to god thank the lord god almighty for the holy spirit who dwells in our hearts he revives us he empowers us he strengthens us he encourages us keep moving forward in our purpose every day for a purpose we have been created with purpose, on purpose, for a purpose. It's up to you and I as a child of God to learn how to communicate with God and how to allow his voice to speak to us in our spirits, a rhema word that we need to hear to help give us a heart of discipline, a heart that's obedient, a heart that's surrendered. If we don't learn how to surrender to the voice of the Holy Spirit, how can we learn how to walk in his truth and his righteousness if we're not listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit? Because the leadership comes from the power of the Holy Spirit when you mm -hmm. learn how to hear God speaking to you through his word. It's the word of God that speaks. It's the word that produces life. It's the word that empowers us. The word that gives us the ability to, to do exploits. That means supernatural things for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So as you just tuned in, I'm going to a word of prayer. With you, my sister, ain't nobody else came on yet, but that's okay, because where's two or three guys in his name, he's in the midst. That Amen. many times I started this Bible class, I was by myself. I had nobody else on but me and Jesus. And I talked like I had a whole audience. <laughs> you know, because sometimes we, we, we get discouraged when you're looking at numbers. But when you learn how to not look at the numbers and look at the leadership of the Holy Spirit, what he wants you to do in obedience. That's Amen. when you find yourself walking in the in anointing and walking in the leadership of the Holy Spirit to do what God says to do to impact his people. Whether Amen. people are with you or not, you still go on in the power of the Holy Spirit that God has instructed me. So that's what I do a lot of times. I do this, this by myself many times, which I don't care because I've done it many times so, alone. So I thank Amen. God for the Holy Spirit leading me and guiding me. Amen. You know, every day he's there with me to strengthen and encourage me to keep going forward. In the, in, the, in the leadership and the calling on my life, you know, to impact this people the way he chooses. Because Peter has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Amen. He didn't say about the numbers. He said, That's have right. an ear, mm -hmm. you know, 
People hear this lesson even after tonight. I get responses from people occasionally who have went back and watched this lesson mm -hmm. and then comment on people now and that we knew was on live. But people yeah. sit back, they listen, and they watch. You know, mm -hmm. and they, they, they're right there. God bless you, my sister. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hello. Amen. Shereen, God bless you. Good to see you. Thank you, Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Got two of you on live tonight. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. We're going to have a good time tonight. I tell you, when God is ministering by His Spirit, we got to learn how to hear His voice and, 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 and follow His commands and His leadership. Amen. So tonight we left off talking about last week. God, you know, reveals His attributes to the Church of Thyatira in Revelations. You know, we're in Revelations chapter um, eighteen. That's why I've been for the last uh, few weeks. Revelation chapter eighteen and Revelation chapter eighteen is very, very inspirational. It has a lot of knowledge concerning how God addressed this church in different churches, seven churches. But right now He's focusing on the Church of Thyatira. You know, and also reference scripture to this is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 through 4. So I'm going to uh, look, pull this up on my computer in one just, just a second so I can read that one scripture. And uh, we're going to go on a little further, open a word of prayer in just a moment. And I know God is going to do something tonight by his spirit. Amen. 1 Corinthians 13. We all know that that chapter is a love chapter. Yep. It's a love chapter, you know, so we're going to get in there tonight. I'm going to the computer ain't working right. You're talking from Revelation, Pastor Charles? Yeah, chapter 18. Revelation, chapter 18. 18. Amen. Yeah. I'm trying to pull up uh, chapter 13, 1 Corinthians. It ain't working on the computer. 1 Corinthians who? 1 Corinthians, chapter 13. It's not coming okay. up on the computer. I pull my other Bible up. This is not working. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see this. Yeah, I use a lot of different references when I'm doing my lessons a lot of times, you know, because God speaks, you know, in a supernatural way. We got to hear his voice. First Corinthians chapter 13, it says 1 through 4 and 8, verse 8 and verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 through 4, and then verse 8 and 13. It says, if I speak in tongues of men... Or of angels, but do not have love. I am only a sounding gong or a clanging cymbal. You hear that? He mm -hmm. said, "But if, he said, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and, and all knowledge, if I have a have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to the poor and give my body or my body over to be burned." He says, I have gained nothing. I mean, that's something. That is something to think about. Yeah, yeah. He said, give all my possessions to the poor and give my over my body to hardship that I may boast. He said, but I have, have not love. I gain nothing. Then he said, verse, this is in the NIV. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It, does, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. You know, that's what love does. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs. Verse 8 says, love never fails, but there, is, there are prophecies they will cease. Where there are tongues, there will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. And then verse 13, it says, and now these things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. So, and that's what we got to understand, that the love of God is going to forever remain and abide forever in the hearts of God's people. I was just reading 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, 1 through 4, mm -hmm. and verse 8 and 13. Those just came on Facebook. I'm, I'm reading 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And, and, and one thing about love, you know, we know love of God. It, it dwells in our hearts. So, when you got the love of God, you got the greatest thing you could ever have in life. The presence of God dwelling with you. And when you got God's presence with you, it doesn't matter what the enemy does to try to distract you, deter you, try to make you angry, make you bitter, and make you uh, get into a place of resentment and all kind of ill feelings towards other people. The love of God, it compels us to walk in an attitude 
of forgiveness and an attitude of gratefulness. So, Lord, tonight I thank you for this opportunity to share your word. I pray, Lord God, you speak to us by your spirit, Lord God. Give us a rhema word. Give us revelation. Give us insight, understanding, God. Help us, Father God, to dissect the word of God and get it in our spirits, God, that we can grow in grace and in the knowledge of who you are. And I thank you, Lord God, for those who have tuned in, even on live, those on Facebook, Lord God, those on Google Meet. We pray tonight, Father God, that something be said or done that would provoke them to righteousness, provoke them to conviction and change, Father, the things they're doing that's not pleasing in your sight, that you would be glorified in all of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless the Shonda. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Amen. So it's three. So it's four of us total together. Two on Google Meet tonight. Praise God. And the Shonda on Facebook Live. So I thank God for you all coming on tonight. So we're gonna get into our lesson. I'm gonna put. I put it up on the screen. Um, I don't know if you, you know. I'm able to see it. If you're not watching Facebook, you're gonna be able to see it. But I'll read what I'm talking about tonight. And I'm in the book, Breaking the Threefold Demonic Cord, How to Discern and Defeat the Lives of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Delilah. So last week, we talked about God's attributes. And God was re revealing to the church of Thyatira that I am the only true God, idol gods. It doesn't matter about the money you have. It doesn't matter about the possession you have. It's all about me being glorified in your life. And it talks about the characteristics of God, how God is so awesome and sovereign in everything he does he, he comes to the place to bring correction in all of our lives when we're out of order with him. So tonight we're going to pick up in part three. It's a Christ commendations. Christ commendations. So if someone is commending you, what are they doing? Anyone if on live, if you're on live tonight, what, if someone commends you for something you've done, what are they doing? Um, lifting you up. You know, they exactly. Know. Yeah, lifting you up. Lifting you up. That's right. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And that's exactly what's taking place. Christ is commanding the church. So it says the next part of the pattern is Christ's commendations to the saints at Thyatira for their love, faith, service, and endurance. So he's commanding them. These are the characteristics and these are the attitude that they had in the servanthood for Christ Jesus. So he said that he says he commended them, the saints of Thyatira, for their love. Love mm -hmm. is the action word. So if I say I got love for you, there's gonna be some demonstration. Amen. It's not gonna be just a word spoken. That's right. You know, then he says faith. So their faith was unwavering. And then, then he talks about even though in the beginning he, he had to fuss at them because they, they had tolerated the spirit of Jezebel to creep into the church. You read this in other early parts of the scripture. They allowed the, the, the Jezebel spirit to creep into the church, which mm -hmm. caused them to fall into idolatry. Anytime mm -hmm. an evil spirit comes into your church, its whole purpose and motive is to introduce you to idolatry, to turn you away from your faith, your servant, servanthood, and your love for Jesus Christ, and get you to stop being endurance or tolerant towards people who are in rebellion. And that's the thing about the enemy. He loves when you are in rebellion. He loves to keep you in a dark place where there's no repentance. He loves to keep you in a place where you can't hear God speaking to you. He wants you to get to a place where you refuse to come to repentance. And, and repentance is not just a word. It means I have to do something. I have to get to a place in myself where I turn away the opposite direction of going in the wrong direction. So then a change that must take place. Exactly. A change must take place. A change must take place. Don't just say you sorry that you don't change. Sometimes you already know you ain't gonna change. You just say sorry and keep saying it. Right. Many times people say I'm sorry for something they've done because they got caught. <laughs> you know? Because they got caught. They don't really have a heart of forgiveness in them at all. I really know I'm not sorry for what I've done. Are there different are there different stages of repentance? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. And the stages that of repentance is, first of all, acknowledgement okay. that I have a sin in my life. Secondly, I have to uh, allow God to convict me by the Holy Spirit. And thirdly, ask God to forgive me. Yes. Because yes. if there's no acknowledgement, no conviction, no repentance, that means asking God to come into my heart, wash me clean, sanctify me by the Holy Spirit, I would never change 
from my wicked way. That's why Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, a lot of people always quote that scripture, but they really don't live by that scripture. Yeah. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name should humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. You hear what it says? Turn. Turn. That means mm -hmm. go in another direction. The right way God is calling you to come. Right. He said, ask God to forgive you. He said, if you turn from the wicked ways, seek my face from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins. That's what God says. God will hear from the angels and the Holy Spirit saying, okay, this person is ready to walk in righteousness now. So God said, I hear from heaven and forgive their sin. So God mm -hmm. hears you the moment you utter a word. Before you utter a word from your mouth, he heard you. Mm -hmm. you, you hear that? Heart. Yes, it's from the heart. So he knows in the heart that the heart is in the right place to allow God to cleanse it and perfect it, then, then you know, then he knows, okay, now they're, they're in the right state where I need them to be so I can come in and do my work in them now because I know now they're ready to receive what I have to pour into them. You cannot receive the word of God without repentance. Did you know that? Go ahead. Go ahead. For me? Yeah, somebody say something? No, there was two. I was gonna ask a question, but I was trying to get to what I was. Uh, how, I mean, um, let's see, how would it go? Okay. Um, you wanna be? Um, uh, just try. Just keep talking. It'll come to my mind. Um, okay. Yeah, it'll come to me. So here, here's the, here's what God is doing right here in Thyatira. He says, "Without love, hear what he's saying." Without the absence of love, mm -hmm. the word states that we are simply making a lot of noise. Ain't that deep? Yes, it is. Without yes. love, you're like a clanging cymbal and a sound, loud gong. Paul says in Corinthians here, he talks about that. Just making a lot of noise. He yeah. says we can prophesy, we can sing songs and make joyous worship. But if we do not have love, then God is not pleased. And you know what Pastor Paul? Yes. To me, I, I, I want to try to make this make sense. To me, in the body of Christ, yes. it seems like love is just not just. It, to me, it just ain't there like it used to be. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Because I know the word says, the love is gonna go back cold. Right. We talked about that how there's something twenty years ago. And now I've seen it happen. Yes. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, mm -hmm. I know what you mean. Yeah, now I'm living this word that I talked to people years ago. I said, Lord, look at you. Don't tell me God ain't real. <laughs> you know what? You just made me think of something. Let me go to Romans. Romans chapter one. And Romans chapter one. I, I, this made me think of something when you said that because that's the very thing that's taking place today is because people have lost their first love. They turn from their first love. They have turned to the things of the flesh that satisfy their flesh and not follow after God's truth. Right. So, Paul says here in chapter 1 of Romans, verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and un unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them but God has shown it unto them this is the reason why there's the absence of love in the church people go through the motion they go through the cliches you know, they put on a, a front that they're walking in love and they're really not no, they're not. You know, body language. Yeah, body language, exactly. Kill everything. Yes. I, I promise you, I do not know a person that a particular person felt about me the way they did until I hugged them. Yeah. I said, my Lord, I didn't know this too. I felt it. Mm hmm You can. And I didn't know it. You know the Come spirit by the spirit. Never said a word, never said a word about it. But right. Body language told it all. Yeah, mm -hmm. body language tell, it speaks loud. It's just like you just said a word. Your body language will give an outward expression of how you really feel towards a person. Yes, it does. You know, that's why when this church here is talking about them, he said, if you don't have love, he says, you ain't pleasing God. You, you can't even please God. You know, and that's why it says, 
for God to allow his wrath to be revealed against them because the people have got to the place. And you read chapter 1 of Romans, the whole chapter, and in verse 20, it says, For the invisible things of him, he says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world is clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power of his eternal power and God here so that they are without excuse. So God says he revealed himself, the invisible things of who he is. He reveals it to us in order to come to repentance. So we don't have an excuse. Don't have an excuse. Yeah, we want to make an excuse for, for doing wrong. We want to make an excuse to not get things right and reconcile our brother and sister when they wronged us or we wronged somebody else. So we hold on to the resentment of that, that issue and we hold on to a callous heart because of rebellion and we get stubborn. And that's what pride says in because pride brings stubbornness. Then also it brings haltiness. And the word tells us pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. So if you get to a place you haughty in yourself, you're telling God, God, your, your grace ain't good enough. <laughs> the blood of Jesus they, they did nothing for me. You know, so we continue to walk in rebellion and in darkness. That's where that callous heart brings darkness. In our role as pastors, we have corrected someone who entertained a Jezebel influence. We try to operate in love. We try to operate in love. We know, we know that the person was responding out of a deep spirit of rejection. For it's not the love of the person would be setting him or her up for failure. So we try our best to walk in love. So this is a good point here. So as pastors, as leaders, when God put a word in your spirit to go and bring correction to somebody else who, who's going through a spirit of rejection or a spirit of hurt, a spirit of, of, of illnesses, whatever's going on in their life, God will speak to you by his spirit to go to the individual to bring a word to help calm their hearts even give them a word of hope. I say it all the time. God would give us a message of hope through individuals. But yeah. a, lot, a lot of times, because I don't like the person that came from, I don't receive the word. Right. You said the word right That was a mouthful right there. Yes, yes. We do it all the time. God has sent somebody who I don't like to share a word from God to me, but because I don't like the individual, I don't receive the word. When that was your answer, what you was praying for. Yeah. God, I said it before, how sometimes God will take a bomb on the street to convict you. That's true. If you're not living right for God and you are a Christian, a born again believer, and you slipped off the track and you start walking in rebellion, start sinning and doing things you know that God's not pleased with in your life, and you come past a bomb in the street and also he says something, God told him to speak to you, you get mad at the bomb for speaking it. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't hear that. That ain't God. And all the time, you know in your heart, that was God speaking to you. Amen. But because of your pride, Amen. you didn't want the bomb to know that God was speaking to me. Yeah. So we have to have a heart of love, an pliable heart. Our hearts need to be pliable to receive the love of God, nor to minister the love of God. Amen. I cannot minister to anybody in this world without the love of God in my heart. That's true. Because That's true. I would be in pride, it would be all me doing it, and not God. And that's when self gets in the way. There you go. You know, so we're not setting people up for failure. We're not trying to break their ego. We're not trying to put them down. We're here to encourage, edify, and build one another up in the faith. That's what it's all about, right there. That's right there. That's it. Right there. We'll have no mercy. Because we're in the body of Christ. Yes. So we're trying to help them to get there. That's it. Right. That's right. You're right. We have to help them get there where they need to be in the Christ. That's right. You know, one, one thing God has shown me this week, at the beginning of this week, he says, the reason why a lot of people struggle with the same bad habits as a child of God is because they keep making excuses. I just read this too. They keep making excuses. The reason why I can't overcome a certain habit. We can break our habits if we learn how to say, okay, Lord, this is the issue I'm dealing with. This is the problem being a stronghold in my life. This is the, the thing that keeps me in bondage. Help me be delivered. Deliver me, God. Come into my heart. Deliver me from me. 
If we're willing to tell God to deliver us from ourselves, yeah. God comes in, he is surround people who gone through the same thing you are dealing with, who overcame that same issue, the same bad habit, the same stronghold, and give you the method of what they did to overcome it from the word of God. Yes, Lord. Testimony. Go back to testimony. You overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Our testimony will be shared with somebody else who we see doing the same issue. For example, homosexuality or drug addiction or, or prostitution or alcoholism. It doesn't matter what the sin is. God said, I'm looking at the heart. He's not labeling what your sin is. He's labeling what your heart is. But you know, man labels our sin. That's it. Got them in categories. Mm -hmm. All that old type of stuff. Don't want to deal because that person is daddy. You know, we, we just got this thing all messed up out here. We do. We got all messed up. It's all messed up. I do know you got to ask for that deliverance. You got to, yes. like, like as Charles said, you got to go to God, you know, within yourself and, 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 and pray to him and ask for that repentance. That's yes. Right. That's, That's it. right. That's, That's it. Right. That is so true. You're, you're right about that. You're right on point. Because That's if you're not my willing, prayer, mm -hmm. go ahead. My prayer I have up before the Lord now is, Lord, help me to forgive people who have hurt me in the past. Because yeah. I'm, still, yeah. I'm still holding on. I'm not going to lie. I'm still holding on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That hurt. right. And Lord, I want to forgive them. And then, Lord, help me to forgive myself. That's it. That's it. Help me to forgive myself. You know, and God will do that myself. every single time. He'll help yeah. you forgive yourself as well as forgive yeah. others who wronged you. You know, mm -hmm. I cannot receive forgiveness if I'm not in the state of mind to receive forgiveness. Yeah. And when you hear I say it, the state of mind. Because mm -hmm. the mind is where the enemy attacks you the most. It's the mind is where the enemy holds you in captivity and bondage. If he can keep you in a place of bondage, he'll keep you in a place of darkness. Darkness right. overpowers light. On our, on our radio show, last couple of weeks, we've been talking about being a, a lampstand. So as a lampstand, you have, in the, in the Old Testament, they, it talks about lampstands. The lampstands were in position to provide light in the temple. So you had different structures of lampstands. You got some that's designed with branches that stick out. In the Old Testament, it talks about branches. And so on each branch is a light. You know, and as God began to reveal to us that we are the lampstand of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is that light that's on the top of the lampstand to be revealed to people around us. Then we talked about light last week because if you have light shining on you, you can't stay in darkness. Light, it, it reveals, it manifests. Not only does it manifest, but it also light brings healing and deliverance. There are certain lights. I, I noticed this even in my building where I live at. Some of the vets here, they have an ultraviolet light that they got from the VA. Because they have certain illnesses in their skin or in their body, they need this light to provide healing. Not only that, the light also, it makes things visible that you couldn't see before. And when you have the light of the Spirit of God in you, the Holy Spirit begins to show you your heart. He shows the heart of other people. But in order to see the, the heart of other people, I have to see the heart of myself first. If I can't see myself first, how can I see what's into my else? Remember it says in Matthew, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. I was, and so Matthew chapter 7 and chapter 1, he talks about judging. But he also talks about trying to take the beam out of somebody's eye, you got to mold your own eyes. You yeah. know, so it's like you trying to take something out of somebody else, but you got in yourself. And he's talking about you got to get to a place where you recognize what's wrong with you first, in order to help somebody else be delivered. Amen. God bless yeah. your cousin for coming on. Amen. You know, so we have to get to a place in ourselves we're hearing the word of God to convict us to walk in his love and truth. We will have no mercy, on the other hand, or of the spirit of darkness, if we would not allow our position of authority to be compromised. We cannot allow us to be compromised by the enemy. For, for us not to love the person would be setting him up for failure, so we try our best to walk in love. So if I don't have mercy, how can I have compassion? I can't have mercy without compassion. That's true. So just because a person might have fallen that I'm a friend with, they made a mistake, I'm not going to condemn my friend. I'm not going to judge them and put them down because they messed up. 
I'm going to come to them in love and say, you know what? You can make it. God is with you in the, you know in your life. I understand you have a problem. He's there to heal and deliver and set you free from the inside out. Now all you gotta do is receive his mercy and grace. Amen. You know, and tell you when we get to the place in ourselves, we realize that I can't make it without God. I can't make God it without Christ. <laughs> God will deliver you. He'll set you free. That's right. Yes. You know, and I, I'm 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 going through the same thing, but yes. I think I'm getting a little better with it because I'm talking to God about you know forgiveness, and then the next step is to learn how to forget. That's if it. We can learn how to forget. We we we'd be so much better off. That you know, it would. Yeah, you know, I know. I, I'm feeling of the things you've been through. You holding on to. That's that's like removing those yokes. You yeah. Remove those yokes. Move them and, and to cleanse yourself from that. You know, you feel a whole lot better. I'm working on that too myself. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know what? I ain't giving up. God's gonna bring you out of here. Yes, yeah. yes, that's it. That's it. So we that's gotta it. get in our spirit. We gotta get to a place in ourselves where we uh let go of ourselves and let the Lord have his way in us. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here it says in our book, it says, notice once more that Jesus commended by a tyra. For his love, faith, service, and endurance. He commended them. He praised them because they did things right. Jezebel will go full force after faith based ministries and churches that are alive. You hear that? Jezebel doesn't go after a dead church. No. <laughs> <laughs> that spirit don't, that is not going to attack a dead church because no. it already got that church. If your church is dead, there's no life flowing in that church. And you leave the same when you come out each week. You need to leave that church and find another place to go. Because the Holy Spirit. Yes. Because the Holy Spirit, he produces life. So wherever church I'm at, I'm going to hear messages. I'm going to hear sermons. I'm going to hear teachings that's going to produce life. If I'm not hearing anything produce life in me, then I will continue to live in darkness. And that's why I said it earlier about the light. When the light shines, it said the light, the Jesus was the light of the world, and the light that the world among men, not only that, he said we beheld the glory, the glory as the only begotten Son. So because he is that light, he's the word. So the word is light. That's why it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. That was light. Yes. The light came from acknowledgement of Jesus Christ being the word to reveal in our hearts the light we need to overpower the darkness in our heart. Yes. My God. Since Jezebel will go to full force at the faith-based ministries and churches that are alive, yes. serving the community and enduring hardship because the Spirit knows how powerful the word of God is. Oh. Ain't that something? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. So the Spirit of Jezebel knows how powerful the word of God is. Yes. The devil knows how powerful the word of God is. Yes, you got to know how powerful the word of God is. That's right. So when you I read the Bible, go ahead. Gotta walk in that power though. That's it. We know the power, but we, I think I got since I've kind of like been into a spiritual drop, I kind of like I know the power that I had for is not like you would, I feel the giftedness. Yes. You you still what I'm saying? Yes. Um, and I'm working. I know I'm in the right place. I yes. already know I'm in the right place to me. That's it. That's all I got to say. Cause confirmation is coming at me left and right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> every Sunday, every Sunday. I thought, okay, God, here I am. <laughs> and you know, one thing about when you're in a spiritual drought, it seems like sometimes you can't hear God. You're right, cousin. Faith is the motivator. Faith is the motivator. Because even when I'm in a spiritual drought, mm -hmm. I always think about the children of Israel. When God brought them out of Egypt into the wilderness, mm -hmm. they went into a place that was unfamiliar in the wilderness. Even though sometimes they got into a drought. They got into a place where, okay, God, we got no water. God, we got no food. That was a drought. That was a famine. So, so yeah. God had to provide for them because he knew that you're my people and I brought you out this far. And if you trust me, I'll satisfy. I'll make the dry places flourish. 
with abundance of rain. God knows how to cause everything in your life to be made according to his will to be productive in your life. We get to the place we doubt God's provision because it's not what I really want. Just like when he provides the mammoth for them to eat in the wilderness. They said, Moses, you brought them here to starve to death. We're going to die. Moses interceded for them, crying to God. God, they need food. God said quail. He, he said manna. You know, so God fed them. They mm -hmm. had them with enough where they can get just enough for each day. Mm -hmm. But then they started getting selfish and getting prideful and wanting more. You know, and God said, okay, go ahead. It's going gonna, it's gonna to spoil. Mm -hmm. So God allowed everything they gathered to spoil so the land became stinking because they got to the place. They stopped trusting God for vision and just wanted what they wanted when they wanted it. It reminds me of church today. We get to the place, God does something supernatural in our church, and we get to the place where, okay, God showed up in our church today, so, you know, he's better, where church is, my church is better than anybody else's church. You ought to come to our church because our church is over here. God really does stuff over here. God, let a drop come in. He let a drop come because people get into pride, lift them in pride to humble you. Many times God told you, I led you into the wilderness to humble you. Sometimes God will take you to a dry place to humble you. A dry place to get your attention when you got so caught up and too busy with everything else going on in your life. You know, you're right. Faith, faith is a motivator of love. And when you get to the place, the absence of God's love, you allow yourself to be distracted. And when you get distracted, you can't hear God clearly. I was listening to something earlier before I came on live tonight. My sister sent it to me, this video on YouTube. And it's, a, it's talking about how sometimes God will wake you up between the fourth night, the hour of the night, which is between three and five in the morning. And many times you wake up during that time every day. It's the same old thing. You keep waking around the same time. And when he said this, he says, many times that's God trying to get you in position to speak to you. But because you're sluggish, you're tired, you don't hear God speaking to you. So you get up, go to the bathroom, get some water, and go back to bed and try to go to sleep. And then you can't go to sleep. He said, the next time that happens to you, you ought to get to the place where you say, okay, God, here I am, speak to me. And he said, get a journal. God will begin to speak during that fourth hour of the night and give you something he needs to convey to you from his word by the Holy Spirit. And that word be something that you need to share with somebody else. Because anytime God speaks to us, it's not just for us. It's for somebody else to be for their hearing, for them to be delivered, to be set free, to be encouraged, to be motivated. Yes. But we get to the place where we don't want to hear God, so we get sluggish and we go back to sleep. Right. I agree because you know what? He's been waking me up like that for a long time. I, at first I was just like, I'll try to lay there and go back to sleep. I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to get up That's and it. I'm just going to start having a worship service within myself. That's it. That's it. Songs, scripture. Praying, walking around my house, going on the floor, you know, just thinking like that's what I started doing. And now I get up wanting that, you know, to get into that part of my life before I go out for the day. Yes. So I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Because it sets your day off. You yeah, know, even when he I said, because he said, so I don't do it, I feel like I missed something. Mm -hmm. So the next day I said, okay, now I got to get up. I can't just lay there now. I got to get up now. You know, so it teaches me to become responsible. Yes. You know, to God's word. That happens to me many times too. Sometimes God will wake me up at three in the morning. I just lay there. Okay, God, what is it? You yeah. know, what are you trying to speak to me? And all of a sudden, I get a word from God, and then somebody call me either that same day or a few days later, and I share that word with them, and they tell me, "Oh, we've gone through a situation. I needed that word. It was just what I needed to hear." Because we never know the impact of the word of God that God gives you to help touch somebody else's life at the time they need to hear from God. That's true. Listen yeah, to this. Yeah, that's why that's Go ahead. Said I know that because I know my, my, my sleeping shift has just changed. And it's been like this going on like that for, for a little while. And I never had this type of schedule. Right. So I've asked myself, why do I get up like this? Why do I go to sleep like this? 
So now I know it's just time to it's just time to be with God when I'm waking up. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I'm that's it. Up. That's it. Yeah. I, because you know we get so busy. And, yeah, I know my when I get up, I'm tired, and uh, I let him do do me like that early in the morning. Cause early, I done got my rest. You know that all the doors not going all around me, so I'm glad to do that. Cause he, I'm just I'm just too tired. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, this is why we must recognize Jesus and his word. Praying the word and allowing the cleansing of the word to wash over the situation. You hear that? This is why we must recognize Jesus and his word. Praying the word. Praying the word. You hear that? Praying the word. So I can find my favorite scripture and pray this word and watch God speak by his spirit what I need to hear from God to convict, to change, perfect, and purify. You hear that? That's what God would do when I pray his word. Convict, change, perfect, and purify. Purify. Allow the cleansing of the word of God to wash over any situation I'm dealing with. Because I can allow God's word to speak, and God's word will bring changes in my life and the life of others around me. So, I mean, so it's so important as a child of God to get to the place where we let God minister to our hearts. Amen. You know, I mean, it's so important. Got to get in, get in the word of God. We got to get in the word of God. Man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. Let's go on a little further. Part four. Christ's condemnation. So now he con he commends them, but he also has to condemn them for paganism. And that's paganism is idol worship. That's right. Having a personal relationship with God is imperative. That's right. Amen. Though Thyatira was doing well in love, faith, service, and endurance, the church was rebuked for tolerating the heretical teachings of Jezebel and her paganism. Anything that's heretical is a teaching that defies the doctrine of Christ. As I have previously stated, godly correction is needed. If there is no godly correction in our lives, we will continue to be going in the wrong direction in the pathway of destruction on our way to hell. Mm. When God is trying to prevent us who claim to be children of God to get realigned with the Holy Spirit, get in your word, now the word of God, to bring you back to the place where you are walking in truth and righteousness. Amen? So we got to get that word because we got to be corrected. If there's no correction, there's no change. If there is no correction, there will never be change. That's true. Listen to this. Those whom Christ loves, he also chastises. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 through 7. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 through 7. I'm going to read that. Give me one second. Pull it up on my screen. Hebrews. Glory to God. It's a good lesson. Chapter 12. Okay. Hebrews chapter 12. 5 through 7. It says this. I'm going to start at verse 4. Put it in King James. This is it's really good. We need to pay attention to this. Okay. So, I'm going to start at verse 4. It says here. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving again against sin. So there's no resistance, right? To sin, that we're talking about. So ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. So I haven't stopped giving in to sin. I'm not going against it. And ye have forgotten the exhortation. Sheree, can you mute your phone, please? It's making a lot of background noise. Yeah, I'm going for do what now? Yeah, there you go. You're, you're uh, making a lot of noise in the background. Oh. 
Yeah, whatever they is making a lot of noise. Okay, thank you. It says, <clears throat> let's see. You know how I mean it? Okay. All right. I don't know what that noise is over there. I don't know. You want me, you want me to see if I can get you on Facebook? Uh, that's, you're fine. I can mute it. Give me a second. I'll mute okay. it for you. Okay, I just muted. <clears throat> okay, here we go. It said, For whom the Lord, it's a, first of all, it says here, And ye have not have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto, as unto you as children, unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Okay? Then it says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And scourges every one or every son whom he receiveth. Verse 7. If you endure the chastening, God did it with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Okay? Then it says, <clears throat> But if you be without chastisement, if you be without chastisement, but if you be without chastisement, where are all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. So you're not sons of the Lord if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to, you know, to perfect you, to correct you, to change you. You know, so you got to get to place in yourself. We let the Lord bring you back to the place in himself, you know, where you can receive that correction when you need correction. Amen. So I don't know. I said you got me so. Okay, you have to mute it, mute it, unmute it yourself. You, you, you're muted. If you got any questions, unmute your, uh, your live, you know, because uh, it's muted. <clears throat> so we have to be in a pliable position of heart to hear from the Lord when God is trying to bring change in our lives. Because without that conviction, he said, you're not his. The Holy Spirit, in order to bring correct, correction and perfection in our lives, he rebukes us. When we're out of order with God. And he brings us back to the place where we're able to receive the chastisement, that correction, like a father does his child. So like we got children. We have children out of order in your house. You have the right to punish your child to make them do better. God does the same thing as his children. He punishes us in a loving way. Not a punishment to condemn you, to make you feel bad to make you turn away from him, but a, a discipline to make you come back to him and want to receive his righteousness. That's what God does. You know, so we have to get to a place in ourselves where we say, okay, God, I, I, here I am. I done messed up. I made a mistake. Correct me. Some believe that Christ does not rebuke or condemn. The word does not say that. There is therefore no condemnation. It's the word does say there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. But it goes further to say, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The spirit. So if you walk after the spirit, yeah. then you're not going to be walking according to the dictates or the leadership of the flesh. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem comes in. And, and I, this is something God had to deal with me about. Because I, I used to be a hypocrite. Let me keep it real. I was a hypocrite. I would come in and preach a good message, sing a good song, I walk in anointing, do everything God tells me to do. For the, for the church and be a hypocrite. So as soon as I leave church, go back to do my own dirt. You know, go back to my, my fleshly way of living. Until one day, I came face to face with the mirror of the word. And the Holy Spirit said, how can you tell somebody else how to live right and you're not living right behind closed doors? Ain't that powerful? It is. It's powerful. <laughs> it's powerful. You know, and we have to be willing to hear God speak to us and bring correction to ourselves as a leader. Leaders are no respective persons when it comes to correction. God, he loves us all the same way. He convicts us all. He brings condemnation in our heart to, to make us get to place of repentance. But then he also brings back the love to let you know, hey, I still love you. That's right. I'm the That's it. I still love you. I wash you in the blood. He said, let us draw near to God with hearts full of faith, being washed clean from an evil conscience, and being sprinkled with clean water. So the washing comes from the word of God. When I hear that has an ear, that's what he says in Revelation, a lot. 
He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Mm -hmm. When the Holy Spirit speaks, he wants you to listen. He's not speaking just to be speaking. You don't have pastors preaching just to be preaching. You got some of them for a show, some of them for a praise, because they 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 gratifying themselves. Yeah, sound but good. Sound good. Clanging gongs, sounding yeah. cymbals. Uh -huh, that's he, it. He's looking for someone who's going to stand up behind the sacred podium and tell the truth of God's word, no matter who it hurts. Because God has to break you to heal you. Well, he, it's like a two-edged sword. Two-edged sword. That's it. That's it. Because if God doesn't cut you, then there can't be no healing. That's true. That's right. Amen. Yeah. If God doesn't cut you, there can't be any healing. That's you got to get to place in yourself where you say, okay, God, I messed up. I, I slipped off track. I did this sin. I knew I was wrong. My conscience condemned me, God. Forgive me. Cleanse me from my sin and unrighteousness. Come in my heart, God. Guess what God does? He says, you know what? Because I love you, I'm going I'm to whoop you. You know, I'm gonna let the, Sometimes he let the enemy whoop you. God will let the enemy whoop you. <laughs> and, and when the enemy comes to whoop you, the enemy pushes you. People don't realize. This, this is something God showed me. We get mad when stuff bad happens to us, right? Sometimes when you're not in the right place where God wants you to be, God will let bad stuff happen to you to draw you back to himself, which is all the plan of the enemy to destroy you. But God says, <laughs> I love the word of God, and we know that. Hallelujah. All these works together for the good to them that love God and are the called. He said, the call with expression. You call my God to work for the good. So even though it doesn't look good, doesn't feel good, don't seem good, God says it works together for the good. You just got to trust in the plan. <laughs> We just quoted that scripture to each other. I said, look, I said, it's going to work out for the word of God. Said it That's is. it. It works for the good. It works for the good. We got to recognize everything that God does, it works for the good. Yes, it does. It don't you know, feel good, like I said, but it's going to work it out It don't feel good. It. When I went through cancer, that didn't feel good. Yeah. But you know one thing I realized, so even when I was going through cancer, there was still some sin in my heart. God had to perfect he had to change me. So, in other words, he had to sit me down for a season mm -hmm. to cleanse me, to deliver me, and set me free. So, even though I went through cancer, it all worked in the plan for repentance. Did you hear that? Yeah. Sometimes God will let afflictions come upon you to get you a place of repentance. We know you're not repenting at all. Sometimes he allows for them to bring repentance in your heart. So, let me read this last point. We're gonna stop right here. He said, "Let me remind." He said, "Let me remind you that Jezebel calls herself a prophetess. She calls herself a prophetess, which she was not, and then taught and seduced the people to commit fornication and eat foods sacrificed to idols. You hear that? She calls herself a prophetess, and then she commit calls people to commit fornication and eat things that God forbid them to eat those sacrificed to idols." So I have already discussed how the enemy can falsely prophesy. And if we believe what he says, then God considers this idolatry. God considers this idolatry. It's the same as eating food, sacrificing to idols. In essence, we're eating the devil's words. Eating the devil's words. So if I'm eating things that's not of God, I'm eating the devil's words. During the trade guilds, festivals, people are not consumed. People not only consumed food sacrificed with the idols, but they also participated in licentious rites, which, which was religion and in sex, and were mingled. So they, in addition to consuming the devil's portion, the church in Thyatira had been seduced to embrace lawlessness, superstition, the devil's worship, legalism, and sexual sins. So the church, he said the church, these things are the same thing taking place in the church today. People are falling prey to the enemy's tactics 
you know, are being seduced with these unclean spirits. You know, they're being seduced into legalism, following mm -hmm. the law. They're being seduced to following sexual sins, pornography, fornication, adultery. They, they become vulnerable to false mm -hmm. doctrines because of their hearts are prone to do evil. You know, and that's something. You know, we got to get to the place we realize what is the enemy doing in my life that caused me to, to lust after the flesh, to have the lust of the eyes, to have the pride of life. What is he doing to seduce me? Mm -hmm. The church was seduced to embrace lawlessness, breaking God's laws, following superstition. We heard superstition statements before where they say you, you break a way, no, break a mirror, you have seven years mm -hmm. of bad luck. Mm -hmm. Superstition, right? Mm -hmm. Paul warned Timothy, do not follow out the old wise fables. You know, these superstitious ways and different false doctrines and things. But you know, he said, you continue to fan the flame of how you keep preaching the gospel. Don't don't get to the place where you allow anything to compromise your faith in God. Mm -hmm. So they were vulnerable to following false teachings. They were vulnerable to giving to the lust of the flesh. But check this out. But we must not limit the fornication and adultery to these examples. Another example is embracing the spirit of whoredom. They mm -hmm. gave it to the spirit of whoredom. Whoring after other gods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we open our lives to the spirit of whoredoms, then we also open the door to a Jezebel stronghold. Mm -hmm. If we open the door to seducing spirits of whoredom, we turn away from following God's truth and righteousness. Hosea chapter 5 verse 4. Listen to this. The spirit of whoredom is noted in a Hosea chapter 5 verse 4. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God. For the spirit of whoredom is in the midst of them. They have not known the Lord. Ain't that something? Mm. Didn't even know the Lord. Because the spirit of whoredom has, has violated their hearts. We talked about this in previous lessons. The Jezebel spirit seizes illegal access to okay. take authority over your life. Yeah. Illegally right. take authority. Illegal, right. You know, because you don't know the word of God. You're not repenting. You're not walking in righteousness. The enemy comes in a seductive way to entice you to seize Ill illegitimate authority over your life to control you, manipulate you, and build a death structure in your mind. And that and death structure. Go ahead. And that way, God turns you over to a reprobated mind. There you go. I was getting ready to say that. Because when you get to that place where there's no more conviction, no more shame for your wrongdoings, then you get to a place of reprobate. Yeah, All this I is written in chapter to, 1. Romans chapter yeah, 1. I thought, I thought it happened to my nephew right before my eyes. Mm -hmm. And he's still out there. And I said, God done turned him over. Absolutely. Yeah. You got, your bad. you got pastors that are reprobates in the body of Christ. You got yeah. leaders in the body of Christ who are reprobates because they refuse to repent of their whoring. Yeah, he was preaching the word of God, doing real good. I don't know what happened, but he got, I think I said, he worked in what he was before. Oh, yeah. He bring back more Seven more spirits. Yeah, that's what happened. I saw it happen to Seven him. more spirits. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and the more you allow that spirit to infiltrate your structure, these are some of the characteristics it says here. I mean, even his conversation was like talking, mm -hmm. what tail and hit, good hit those people. Just man was just all over the place. Yeah. Said, no, that, happens. that happens. The spirit of whoredom manifests in several different ways. Mm -hmm. The spirit of whoredom manifests in several different ways. One way is unfaithfulness and adultery. When people hear this word adultery, they always identify adultery as sexual sin. That's true. But it's not. That's right. According to the word of God, he's not talking about sexual sin. Right. Even though it's part of the attributes of that spirit, mm -hmm. he's talking about adulterating after other gods. That's right. Because That's you right. turn from him to follow idol worship. That's right. That's it. You know, then it says... You got something to say, Shree? Okay. Then it says the spirit, soul, and body, or body prostitution. 
we're gonna have to pick this up next week because I want to take my time with these characteristics. I mean, I'm gonna have to do this next week. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna indulge in this right now because this, this is really deep when God gave it to me. But I encourage you, don't have this book, get this book, Breaking the Threefold Demonic Court. I'm gonna put it on the screen so you see what I'm talking about. Let's see. Uh, there. This is the book I'm talking about right here. If you need me to get you a book, the book's usually around between $16 and $20. You know, I can get it on Amazon. You know, I can get a book for you if you want a book, you know, and then we have it to add to your library. But it's a really good book to have to, you to, you know, to your library to study because it breaks down a lot of things concerning the spirit of the enemy. Let me see the book, Pastor. I didn't see the book. All right. I don't see it either. Okay, I'm going uh, to have to put it on Facebook and I'll send it to you. Yeah, I'll send it to you. It's on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, but I'll, uh, you can have faith. If you go back and watch this live, you see it on here as well. Amen. So, we're going to end up closing right here tonight. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> yeah, she fell off. Hers was making a lot of background noise. I don't know what that was, but a lot, yeah. lot of noise in the background. But you know, one thing about it, you know, continue to allow God to minister to your heart, to allow him to minister, you know, fill you with his spirit. If mm -hmm. things in your life are not right, allow him to convict you because that conviction is what's going to bring you right standing with God. If yeah. there's, there's no conviction, there'll be no change. And we have to allow the spirit of God to change us from the inside out because that's where change mm -hmm. comes from. It's from the attitude where we say, okay, God, I need you in my life to saturate me in your anointing, destroy every yoke, remove every burden. And filled with the Holy Spirit that can be a vessel used by you for your glory. And I guarantee mm -hmm. God will do that for you every single time. Amen. So, Father, tonight I thank you for this lesson, God. Thank you for the word of God. I ask that you, Father, continue to convict our hearts, bring change in all of our yes, lives God. for the better. I ask that you perfect us, God, in praise. Perfect us in our worship. Perfect us, God, in our yes, living God. for you. Yes, that God. nothing will hinder us from walking the right before yes, you. That yes, you will be glorified yes. and exalted. In Jesus' yes. name I pray. Yes. Amen. 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 As I do Amen. each week, if anyone uh, <clears throat> doesn't know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, I always introduce you to Christ. The Word says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in Him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. You can see this life of Jesus Christ that has gave His life as a sacrifice for your sin and my sin, that we can live in this righteousness. By making this confession, the words of that if thou confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart that God raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You can be saved, born again for the Holy Spirit, just by praying this simple prayer. And you might be a backslider. You can pray this prayer and be restored with God tonight, just by praying this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, ask the Lord to come into my heart, forgive me for my sins, known and unknown, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, and I ask you, Lord God, to be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you just got born again. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I thank you all for tuning in tonight on the live. And I thank you for coming on, Sister Marks. God bless you. I, 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 amen. I'm glad you came. On. I, I, I like feedback. Nobody want to come on, on live, you know, so I'm glad you did. Thank yeah. God for you, you know. I'm going to put it up each week, too. I've been doing it each week, but people haven't been coming on. But I invite people to come on to the live. I invite them to come on to Google Meet because that way we can interact with each other like we do in the church, we still can interact exactly. on here as well. Right. But spread this with somebody else. Let them know that we're on here each week, Tuesday okay. at 6 o'clock. Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Is okay. there any other questions or comments you want to share before we go? No, I'm okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Thank yeah. you. God bless you, dear. How are you all? God bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. And may the Lord give you all peace. Until next week, the Lord says the same. Have a great night. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Amen. 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 Thank you for your contribution. God bless you. Amen. Anyone else want to sow a seed into the ministry, feel free to do so. It goes right back into the ministry. Every seed that I get on, on Facebook, it goes right back into the ministry. So feel free to sow a seed if God touched your heart to sow. And if not, God bless you anyway. And may the Lord continue to bless you and keep you in his will. Until next week, Lord says the same. You all have a great night walking your purpose for purpose because you have been created with purpose on purpose to magnify and glorify the Lord in your everyday living. You have a great night. God bless tonight.